Madam Deputy Speaker, today's statement is an admission of failure. Yeah. Maybe that's why the Home Secretary has asked the Immigration Minister to make it yeah. instead. There's no point in blaming everyone else because they are in charge. The asylum system is broken because they, they broke, broke it. it. They have lost control of our border security, lost control of the asylum system, lost control of their budget and lost control of themselves. Three months ago, my right honourable friend, the Prime Minister, set out a comprehensive plan to tackle illegal migration. We said we would act, and we have. We have increased Im immigration enforcement visits to their highest levels in recent years. Since December, more than 3,500 enforcement visits have been carried out, and more than 4,000 people with no right to be here have been removed. Anglo-French cooperation is now closer than ever before, and will be deepened because of the deal struck by the Prime Minister earlier this month. We have expanded our partnership with Rwanda to include the relocation of all those who pass through safe countries to make illegal and dangerous journeys to the United Kingdom. Our modern slavery reforms, introduced as part of the Nationality and Borders Act to prevent those who seek to abuse our generosity from doing so, are bearing fruit. We are tackling the backlog with our asylum system by cutting unnecessary paperwork and simplifying country guidance. As a result, productivity has increased and we are on track to process the backlog of initial asylum decisions by the end of the year. Yeah, yeah. Madam Deputy Speaker, we must ensure our laws enable us to deal with the global migration crisis, which is why we have brought forward the Illegal Migration Bill. The bill goes further than any previous immigration legislation to fix the problem of small boats whilst remaining within the boundaries of our treaty obligations. And of course, as we reform the asylum system, we will continue to honour our country-specific and global safe and legal commitments. But we cannot and will not stop here, Madam Deputy Speaker, because illegal migration continues to impact the British public in their day-to-day -day lives. The sheer number of small boats have overwhelmed our asylum system and forced the government to place asylum seekers in hotels. These hotels take valuable assets from communities and place pressures on local public services. Seaside towns have lost tourist trade, weddings have been cancelled, and local councils have had their resources diverted to manage them. And the hard-working British taxpayer has been left to foot the eye-watering £2.3 billion a year bill. Madam Deputy Speaker, we must not elevate the well-being of illegal migrants above those of the British people. It is in their interests that we are sent here. The enduring solution to stop the boats is to take the actions outlined in our bill. But in the meantime, it is right that we act to correct the injustice of the current situation. I have heard time and again of councils up and down the country struggling to accommodate arrivals. This is no easy task. The Government recognises that placing asylum seekers into local areas comes at a cost. And so central government will now provide further financial support. Today we are announcing a new funding package, which includes generous additional per-bed payments and continuation of the funding for every new dispersal bed available. We will also pilot an additional incentive payment where those properties are made available faster. But faced with the scale of the challenge, we must fundamentally alter our posture towards those who seek to enter our country illegally. This Government remains committed to meeting our legal obligations to those who would otherwise be destitute. But we are not prepared to go further. Accommodation for migrants should meet their essential living needs and nothing more, because we cannot risk becoming a magnet for the millions of people who are displaced and seeking better economic prospects. Many of our European partners are struggling with the same issue. Belgium, Ireland, Germany and France are having to take similar steps, and the UK must adapt to this changing context. I have said before 
that we have to suffuse our entire system with deterrence, and this must include how we house illegal migrants. So today the Government is announcing the first tranche of sites we will set up to provide basic accommodation at scale. The Government will use military sites being disposed of in Essex and Lincolnshire and a separate site in East Sussex. These will be scaled up over the coming months and will collectively provide accommodation to several thousand asylum seekers through repurposed, repurposed barrack blocks and porter cabins. In addition, my right honourable friend the Prime Minister is showing leadership on this issue by bringing forward proposals to provide accommodation at Catterick Garrison Barracks in his constituency. And we're continuing to explore the possibility of accommodating migrants in vessels as they are in Scotland and in the Netherlands. Madam Deputy Speaker, I want to be clear. These sites on their own will not end the use of hotels overnight. But alongside local dispersal and other forms of accommodation, which we will bring forward in due course, they will relieve pressure on our communities and they will manage asylum seekers in a more appropriate and cost-effective way. Of course, we recognise the concerns of local residents, and we are acutely aware of the need to minimise the impact of these sites on communities. Basic healthcare will be available, around-the-clock security will be provided on site, and our providers will work closely with local police and other partners. Funding will be provided to local authorities in which these sites are located. Madam Deputy Speaker, these sites are undoubtedly in the national interest. We have to deliver them if we are to stop the use of hotels. We have to deliver them to save the British public from spending eye-watering amounts accommodating illegal migrants. And we have to deliver them to prevent a pull factor for economic migrants on the continent taking hold. Madam Deputy Speaker, inaction is not an option. The British people rightly want us to tackle illegal migration. As I have set out today, we are doing exactly that, and I commend this statement to the House. Yes. Shadow Secretary of State Yvette Cooper. Yes. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. Madam Deputy Speaker, today's statement is an admission of failure. Yeah. Maybe that's why the Home Secretary has asked the Immigration Minister to make it yeah. instead. Four years ago, the Cabinet said they would halve channel crossings. They've gone up 20-fold since then. A year ago, they said they'd end hotel use. They've opened more than ever. They keep making new announcements, but it just keeps getting worse. Yeah. And people want to see strong border security and properly managed asylum and refugee systems so that the UK does its bit to help those fleeing persecution and conflict alongside other countries. But we have got neither of those at the moment. There's no point in blaming everyone else because they are in charge. The asylum system is broken because they broke it. They have let criminal gangs rip along the channel. People smuggler convictions have halved in the last four years, even though more boats and more gangs have been crossing, and yet Tory MPs last, yesterday voted against Labour's plan for cross-border police units yeah. to go after the gangs. Yeah, they They've let the asylum decision-making collapse. We've had a big increase in staff, but 40 per cent fewer cases being decided. So they failed to take basic decisions, and they're still not doing Labour's plan to fast-track last year's arrivals from Albania and other safe countries. And as for today's announcements... Madam Speaker, we need to end costly and inappropriate hotel use, but these plans don't do that. The Ministers had to admit, contrary to all of the briefing in the papers this morning, they won't attend, uh, end hotel use. Instead, these sites are additional, and Ministers should have been finding cheaper sites and properly managing costs years ago. Today's damning report from the Government's own independent watchdog, which strangely the Minister did not mention today, says there's been no cost control, that the Home Office contracts are highly inefficient, no cross-government transparency and oversight, officials didn't have financial information on the contracts they were signing, didn't compare costs, and most ludicrously of all, and I quote, different parts of the Home Office 
operating different schemes, at times found themselves competing for the same hotel contracts, Samuel. driving prices Samuel. up. Samuel. Totally chaotic. Basically, they've Samuel. written a whole load of cheques in a panic. If they had put that money into clearing the backlog instead, we wouldn't be in this mess yeah, now. Yeah, 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 and they should have been working with councils to do this, but they didn't. Yesterday, Tory MPs again voted against Labour's yeah. plans for a legal requirement yeah. for councils to be consulted. Instead, he has Conservative councils backed by Conservative MPs taking action against him. So can he confirm? that the Foreign Secretary is backing legal action against the Home Secretary. Frankly, that is a first even for this chaotic <laughs> government. And the bill makes things worse. No return agreements with France or Europe. The Prime Minister has just said the Home Secretary was wrong. The Rwanda flights won't start this summer. They've nowhere to send people to. and Instead of speeding up asylum decisions, they're just going to cancel them. So that means more people in asylum, accommodation and hotels, and more flim-flam headlines that just don't stack up today. It was barges, and it turns out there aren't any. Desperate to distract everyone from the damage they might want to do to the Dambusters' heritage, instead they start talking about ferries and barges. Three years ago they said the same thing. Last summer the Prime Minister said it would be cruise liners. The Home Office civil servant said ferries would end up costing more than the hotels they're already spending so much money on. So instead the Immigration Minister has been sent round the country with a copy of Waterways Weekly trying to find barges instead, and he still hasn't found any. So can he tell us, are these sites then going to be additional, not instead of hotel use, will he still be using more hotels or less for asylum seekers uh, in six months' time? Of the 45,000 people, the boat arrivals last year, can he confirm that more than 90 per cent of decisions have not, not been really taken agree. because the backlog is still their failure? And will he apologise for their failure on cost control? They failed to support Labour's plan to go after the gangs, get a new agreement with France and to fast-track decisions and returns. They are flailing around in a panic, chasing headlines. Barges, oil rigs, Rwanda flights, even wave machines, instead of doing the hard graft. They have lost control of our border security, lost control of the asylum system, lost control of their budget, and lost control of themselves. Will he answer my questions and will he get a grip? Yeah. Well, isn't it abundantly clear, Madam Deputy Speaker, that Labour don't have the faintest clue how to tackle this issue? They have absolutely no plan. What we've laid out today is three months of intense work, which is seeing the backlog coming down, productivity rising, more sustainable forms of accommodation, a harder approach to make it difficult to live and work in the UK illegally, illegal working raids and visits rising by 50 per cent, greater control over the channel, all improvements as a result of the 10-point plan that my right honourable friends, the Prime Minister and the Home Secretary, set out. The, honourable, the right honourable lady looks back to a mythical time when Labour were last in office, when the Home Office, by their own Home Secretary, was deemed to be not fit for purpose. They call for more safe and legal routes, even though we are second only to Sweden in Europe for resettlement schemes. They call for more money for law enforcement, although we've doubled the funding of the National Crime Agency, and our people are out there upstream tackling organised immigrational, immigration criminals every day of the week. And isn't it extraordinary that the Home Secretary can't bring herself to cut the Shadow Home, the Home Secretary can't bring herself can't bring herself to condemn those illegal immigrants who are breaking into our country in flagrant breach of our laws. That is weak. That is weak. The truth is that the Labour Party are too weak to take the kind of tough decisions that we are taking today. And in their weakness, they would make the United Kingdom a magnet. There will be open doors, an open checkbook, and there will be open season for abuse. The British public know that the Conservative Party understand their legitimate concerns. They don't, we don't sneer at people for wanting basic border controls. We're taking the tough decisions. We will stop the boats. We will secure the borders. Yeah.